Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video today we're going to be taking a look at Metal Unit for the PC. The game was developed by Jelly Snow Studios and was published by Meowsis. For this review I will be using an early access version of the game, so please do be aware that some things in this video that you may see may change upon the official release of the game. The game itself is a classic retro 2D style platformer which borrows inspiration from many franchises such as Darling in the Franks, Castlevania, Elisa Dragoon, Gunstar Heroes, and also has a few sneaky cameos from various characters which I'm sure you'll instantly recognise. However, is the game any good or not though? Well, let's go for this review and find out. The world has fallen into ruin, earthquakes, tidal waves, Greenhouse gases and now monsters which lurk beneath the Earth's crust have taken over and have awoken and have come to the surface with the intent of killing all mankind. These vile powerful monsters are none other than an army of... slimes. Well, yes slimes, but also dragons and various other creatures. But after having just watched that time I got reincarnated as a slime, well, I'm pretty sure that we all know just how powerful these slimes really are. Joking aside, however, you control Unit 11, who combats the monsters, and who's also on a mission to find her missing sister, who has apparently betrayed mankind. The story itself is laid out very well, with interactions between the characters, and amazing 16-bit style cutscenes, which really impressed me by just how much detail was put into them. Characters consist of you playing as Jonah, also known as Unit 11. You'll interact with a lot of other characters during the game's story, and these characters will come in the form of her commander, who will give her the detailed instructions on what her missions and her tasks will be. You'll have the captain, who is another Metal Unit user, who will assist you from time to time in certain missions depending on which ones you're on. You'll have the weapons dealer back home at base camp, and you'll also have other characters out there on the field. There are a lot of characters in this game that you're going to be talking to throughout the game's story, and you're going to be running around and meeting a lot of new people during the story as well. The base even has its very own cat, who for some reason sweats. Gameplay. Well, you see this is a good one right here, especially for old time gamers such as myself who grew up with these type of games in our youth. If you are like myself and grew up with games such as Alien Soldier, Gunstar Heroes, Castlevania, Alisa Dragoon, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and a whole host of other classic titles just like these, well, prepare yourself because this game plays a lot like those golden oldies with the look and feel of games in today's modern era. You'll be going through your standard 2D platforming by going from stage to stage, fighting various enemies and collecting power-ups to aid you in your coming battles ahead. Along the way you can choose to rest and regain your health at various base camps located throughout each stage, or risk everything and choose to do the special stages, which will consist of you having to go through different types of challenges in order to unlock better weapons, items or armour. Once you manage to get to the end of each stage, you're going to be faced with a very difficult boss battle, and you're really going to need those special power-ups and equipment because some bosses can kill you in practically two hits, and if you do fail and die, it's right back to base camp with none of your gear which you collected along the way. So you do essentially start right back from the very beginning with nothing. The game's graphics have gone for the old style classic Sega Mega Drive and SNES look, but with an upgrade showing off some amazingly well drawn out cutscenes in between. It really is impressive to see what's been created here with this game's pixel graphics. All the character sprites are beautifully designed, with each frame of animation flowing into the next on an expert level, and coming off as feeling as if it's been professionally made. I can't really find anything negative to say about the game's graphics because the truth is, is that they just kept making me smile. I love the style which the developer went for, as it brings back so many nostalgic feelings for me as an old gamer. But also, I found myself constantly being surprised by just what this game was trying to do by constantly pushing its own boundaries of what you think it's capable of and limited to. It surprised me with features such as giant boss battles, an epic soundtrack, and a massive selection of weapons and equipment 
available to you. It's got a giant cast of characters for you to interact with, and it's just got so much more. Really, I just can't fault the game's graphics at all. If you're an OD like me, you'll absolutely love them. The game's levels are split up into several smaller stages, which will then be loaded with various other enemies that you're going to need to defeat in order to progress to the next area. Some areas are small, with loads of enemies, whilst others can be large and others can be a mixture of puzzles and boss encounters. You're going to need to become a master of all these types, because if you fail and die at any point, you're going to be transported right back to base camp without any of your gear which you collected along your travels. You may not think that this sounds that bad, but some of the later levels are exceptionally hard and they will require you to have decent gear in order to progress anywhere in them. So aside from dodging deadly pitfalls, jumping onto platforms which feel a million miles away, trying not to get blasted to death by exploding robots, and having to fight off against giant dragons and killer robots seat wearing madmen, it's not just your normal everyday platforming adventure. Well, if you are up to this point and you have gone through this review, you're looking at the game and are curious about buying it, and are wondering if it's going to be any good, then I would have to say that yes it is, and yes it definitely is worth the purchase. Especially if you're an old time gamer like me. I know that this is only very early January at this time of this recording, but honestly, I have to say that so far, this is my first and favourite game of 2020. It just brings back all those old nostalgic feelings for an older gamer like myself, who grew up with a Mega Drive as a child and played such amazing games as Gunstar Heroes, Sparkster, Rocket Knight Adventures and so many more. This game has that look and feel to it, but with everything that you would expect to find in today's gaming era, such as fantastic cutscenes, incredibly hard boss battles which can take up half the screen, an incredible soundtrack that fits in perfectly with the game, and well the point is, is, is that I could just go on and on about the game's various features and details and everything else, but I will just simply say this, even though this game is in early access stage at the moment, I really did like this game a lot. It's fun to play, I lost track of time whilst playing it, it's got amazing artwork, it's got a fantastic bunch of characters in it. It's just a highly enjoyable game, which made me smile, and it made me want to keep playing it and going back to it. And sadly, in today's gaming era, there just aren't many games like that. Would I recommend Metal Unit to gamers out there? Yes, I definitely would. Well, that's it for this review, guys. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and please subscribe.